Okay, I lost you for a moment there, um, but I will continue now. Hopefully, uh, we we can upload both of them, um, right? So the last uh, family group is the oral Altaic language groups, right? So we come to Afro-Asiatic language groups, and I want you to um, sort of remember here our sort of movements, right, out of Africa, right, and, and then we come to our Afro-Asiatic um, family tree, right? So you see the Afro-Asiatic umbrella group, Right, you see that it has a Semitic branch here, <coughs> please excuse me, <laughs> okay, so you have a, a Semitic um, branch of Afro-Asiatic language trees and then you have the African branch, right? Now, if you go to the African branches, right, you see that, you know, Afro-Asiatic gives way to Egyptian, right? And we need to change colors here. Okay. Uh, to Egyptian, right, and Ethiopic, right? And then Ethiopic itself goes to Kushomatic, right, language groups, which again, you know, it leads to um, other uh, languages, right? Um, this part, right? Dahalo, Oromo, Beja, right? And then um, New Africa, Berber, Hausa, um, and so on, Siva, and so on, right? And then you get to the Semitic branches and you see that, oh, lo and behold, Hebrew belongs there, right? And you think, okay, a Hebrew, what um, you, you think, for instance, Hebrew and Arabic, what do they have to do? What, what do they have to do with each other, right? They can't have possibly anything to do with each other. And then you learn that, um, in Arabic, you call God, the, the God you call um, al Elaha, al making it definite, like the God, right? Elaha, yeah, means God. So the God becomes God with apostrophe G, right? And you think, what is the, uh, what is the Hebrew version of God, right? And my he, um, my Jewish students know this is Elohim, right? It is Elohim, right? Which comes from this uh, same root, Elaha, Elaha, or Elaha, right? Um, uh, of of the word, right, which means God. So you see that, you know, in, in spite of being um, sort of uh, problematic, unfortunately, uh, neighbors to one another, right, uh, you see that Arabic, Quranic Arabic, meaning standard, Arab, I mean, meaning um, classical Arabic, Lebanese Arabic, right, um, Akkadian, right. We will get to um, and 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 Hebrew, right, and Aramaic, which is a very very important language uh, language that we'll get to. All of this, right, belongs to the Semitic family of languages right and you remember um the the way that um you know um we connected to each other i mean look at this here right um south arabian south semitic and ethiopic 
right? Look how they connect to each other. Why do they connect to each other? Well, because they're, yeah, you know, when Pangea broke up, right, these two, these two were connected to each other, right? And these two are still connected to each other, right? Yemen and Ethiopia and, 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 and whatnot, right? And, and you see that uh, the Semitic branch of families, right, uh, it's, you know, divided to South Semitic here, Central Semitic, right? Uh, you see Babylonian, I mean, Sumerian, your, your um, isolate language here. You see Akkadian and East Semitic, right? And Aramaic, you see North Semitic, right? and so on and so forth um, and um, as far as the Afro-Asiatic family groups and their homelands are concerned. So you remember we talked about Sumerian, the Afro-Asiatic and now we will get to the Indo-European uh, family of languages. Right, so, and, and you remember, you, you, you remember that we said, you know, from um, 10,000 to close to, uh, you know, from 10,000 onwards, we started um, settling, we, you know, began gradually to settle, but we were still on the move, right? We were still on the move, and one of our population groups, right, from 10,000, come circa 4000 BCE, right, um, goes the routes that you see they go, right? They come always, we, we think, from the Caucasus, right? Therefore, you know, on the census that I hope all of you, my friends, make sure you fill your census, right? Um, you see that they say, they ask you whether you are Caucasian, meaning whether you are Caucasian, quote unquote, white, right? On some level, right? And then you see the movements of, of, of these Caucasians. Okay, um, of the Indo-Europeans out of Caucasia, right? So, and you see, circa four thousand BC. You see, we are, the one branch of them are supposed to have come circa three thousand BCE to Iran this way and gone to India um, this way. This is this is the, this. Um, 3000 BC um, sort of movement through Iran um, is, is, is not considered the most reliable these days. It is this movement um, that is considered uh, more reliable from here than Indo-Europeans okay, come to Iran. So you see how it goes. So from 4,000, from around, you know, northern Caucasia, right, around 4,000 BCE, right, um, you come not only to, um, you know, to Taklamakan Desert and from there to India and whatnot, but you also come this way to Iran. And this coming to Iran is supposed to have taken place, as far as we know, 1500 BCE, right? Um, there were other populations on the Iranian plateau, and... Okay, this is what we call the plateau, because you have to... Uh, you know, it is it is high above the um, water levels, right? Um, so um, I, I concentrate on on Iran, also for 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 good reason. Um, we will we will come to know later on. But um, what I want you to, I'm sorry, I don't want boxes. I want this to go away. Okay. Um, 
so but 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 you see from the same caucuses right they go into anatolia they go into anatolia right and then they go into europe right so they this is how the migration of indo-europeans are are considered to have happened right and therefore the affinities in the languages so now when i tell you if i tell you my friends all of you can um speak um uh, would be you know elementary persian right the language of iran of persia right elementary persian um uh, is is um is um is very very familiar must be very very familiar to you well i usually give this example right um you know if you're part of my class right and i ask you um to give me your name you might say for instance i know i have a sara you say my name is sara right so now i will tell you my name right in persian right Nome and this is an A my friends Nome man Parvone Hello forget about Parvone forget about Parvone please and let's concentrate on Sarah Nome man Sara asked, right? So, and if I ask you, my friends, please, yeah, connect these two together, and I will write it. Uh, I'm sorry. I will promise to write it properly. Also here for you. Let's see. I know I have to use another one but okay so um first you say um my okay first you say my friends my name is Sarah and then in Persian you say no me man sara asked right and if i ask you to tell me what is what right you can say very easily right name nom my name no me man my name man my right sara is sara right and is asked e este right and so on and so forth um yeah uh you see that they are all connected now to go back to our um okay to continue actually with our indo-european languages so you see that european languages are actually very close to persian and you know persian old persian is very close to um india the language of india and we will see our branches on of indo-european languages right so they we have two branches of indo-european languages the centum group yeah It are those groups which count the hundred right as centum right so what like 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 what okay um um yeah like like what like uh like 
English, right? Like, uh, like French, right? Where you, you say song, right? Um, like, um, yeah, West Germanic, all of the West Germanic languages, um, East Germanic languages, North Germanic languages, right? Yeah, um, so you see um, German, Saxon languages right here, Italian, Portuguese, Rom Romanian, Spanish, Catalan, yeah, all of this, they are part of the Santum group, right? And then the Satum group, right, um, which called their, uh, with, with, a hundred with with it as such for instance in Persian you call it sat for a hundred right so no lo and behold right look at this my friends so you have um, part of the Indo-European right and uh, Saturn branch right um, you see that the Saturn branch right um, is divided, uh, right, um, here, Saturn, yeah? One branch of the, uh, the Saturn branch is the Indo-Iranian, for instance, right? And, and you see that Indo-Iranian, why Indo-Iranian now, why Indo-European uh, in, in, in general, right? Because they went to Europe, and they went into India, right? And this is at the height of 19th century colonialism, right? And that these, all of these languages and all these movements are being studied by the Europeans, right? Um, or are re-studied, let's say, by the Europeans, right? Um, now, um, so therefore, you see that Hindi, right, is connected in one way or another to Icelandic, right? Ancient Greek, right, is connected, right, to Kashmiri in one way or another, right? Armenian, you see, is an in, in Indo-European languages language, right? You see the Kurds right, speak a, an Indo-European language. The Punjabis, the Nepalis, right, the, one, the Urdu, the language of Pakistan, is an Indo-European uh, language. Bengali, and so on and so forth. Uh, Latvian, right, uh, Albanian, right, Slavic, Czech, Polish, all of that. I mean, you, I want you to study these language groups, right, and see what is connected to what. And then um, the, the, the one that, uh, the Sino-Tibetan languages, right, that, that, that covers a large part of Asia, right, my friends? I mean, look at it, right? This is where the Sino-Tibetan populations are, 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 are settled, right? And you see that from Chinese, Right, and which includes Middle Chinese, of course, Mandarin and Cantonese, the different, um, different um, sort of languages of it, right? And you see uh, the uh, Tibetan, right? Himalayan group, right? Western Tibetan here, um, Tibeto Burman, right? Um, and um, and you see um, the various other uh, languages developing from, um, from Old Chinese. And you see Taiwanese here. And you see, for instance, you, you, I mean, with, with, with Chinese, you think you think of one Chinese, you know, one language, Chinese language, and you see that it is divided into all these different uh, languages, right? Um, 
which making it extremely extremely um, rich right as a family group of languages and you see here East Asia right um, and it's um, sort of language groups different lang uh, language groups right um, you see this is China Tibetan Nepali right um, this and uh, um, Burmese right and so on and so forth right there's one last family of languages I want you to know oh and um, this is what I want this is what we wanted to do we wanted to go to Altai mountains right and figure out where the Altai mountains are and we see where they are on our map Right? Right? And uh, we need, okay, you see, that's Altai Mountains, and then we want our Aral Sea, where we can get, okay. Uh, Aral Sea, which is here, right, and Ural Mountains, right, uh, which would be here, around here, right, to the north of Aral Sea, right, um, and so you see. The Altai again. Okay, if it gives us the Altai again, yeah, okay. So that's the Altai. Eray. <laughs> okay. Forgive me, my friends. Right. Uh, so here is. Uh, the red dot is the um, Altai Mountains, and uh, you see Caspian Sea to your left, and the Little Sea to the east of it, that's the Aral Sea, and to the north of that is the Aral uh, Mountain, Ural Mountains. So, Uro Altaic, right? Ural Altaic. And you see, of course, yeah, you have Finnish, yeah, you have Hungarian, you have Mo Mongolian, right? And you see that um, they, they, they sort of mix with other language groups, right? Part of it here, Korean and uh, Japanese and, right? And then you have your Mongolians, and then lo and behold, your Turkic and Finnish and Hungarian, right? And Tibetan, your Hungarian and and, and Finnish are connected to your your Tibetan, right, my friends? So when we when we talk about the break of the Pangaea and the continents and the movement of the populations and the settlements and the development of languages and so on and so forth, right? And you see the affinities of languages together, right? That and that and you realize, oh, okay, that has to do with the with the movement and migration, right, of our ancestors to the different parts, different broken parts of um, Pangaea and our um, sort of various continental um, sort of plates. Yeah, my friends? So, okay, please uh, make sure, right, uh, you review the material, my friends, and I will see you in the 
next uh, session of these modules. Take care. Bye-bye.